the Amber Trust, music, visual impairment and complex needs. The Sounds of Intent framework. We don't worry, yeah. Adam speaks over visuals of five films. In this film, we're going to see five children who all have visual impairment and quite complex needs. But music is the common theme for all of them. Children with complex needs, for them the world is a sort of buzzing, booming, confusing place. And sound is a really key part of that, especially for children who can't see or can't see very well. Round and round, oh. To me, music is like a strand that goes right through a child's life and the way they learn. And the key thing is to tap into that at the right level so that children can make the maximum progress and, above all, have fun. That's it. 20 years ago in the year 2000, we realised that actually that nobody knows how children with complex needs develop musically, how they can make progress and the kind of things we can expect of them. So we sat down with a group of teachers and therapists and parents and we started thinking what can we observe in these children, the way they engage with sound and music, what kind of development is there and what can we do to help it. Feel how long the string is. Sounds of Intent is a framework of sort of six milestones on the road to musical development that's rooted in the needs and abilities of children with special needs. And it's very much a, a framework of growth. So it starts from the sort of self, the innermost circle on the framework, and expands outward into the world. So it's a nice metaphor for the way that children develop and grow. Level two is about the sensory stage. It's about the beginnings of perception, really. Sam plays the harp to Aaron in a wheelchair. So Aaron is very much at the sensory stage of perception. So lots of information is coming into his brain through his ears and his eyes and his hands. And his brain is trying to figure out what it all means. So the, the important thing is to give him rich, meaningful experiences. Aaron and Sam play a small lyre. Aha, strumming. As he plucks the strings, as his fingers feel the buzz of the sound under them, at the same time his ears are picking up the sound and his brain is starting to make the connection between cause and effect. key thing is really connecting sound with other input. So a crucial thing for level two is to connect sounds that are going into the ears with other multi-sensory experiences like feeling the, the, the buzz of strings under your fingers, for example, of seeing um, an instrument sort of bouncing off the light in front of you. So Alice is very much at the sensory stage of development, so she's still taking in lots of information about the world and trying to piece it together almost like a jigsaw to make sense of what she's hearing and what she's seeing. Alice, in a wheelchair, plays the sound beam by moving her head. The great thing about the sound beam is that it means that any movement that Alice makes 
can be linked to any sound and that's really empowering for her because very often children like Alice would find it hard to play conventional instruments. But with the sound beam, even the slightest movement of a hand or an arm or a head can make a whole symphony of sound. And that really gives her a good chance of understanding cause and effect. Alice can get that what I do will create a change in my environment. Level three is really where music gets going. It's about pattern, it's about predictability, it's about copying. Adam dances and plays the maracas with Drew, while Derek plays the keyboard. And the best way to start, really, with level three is to copy what the child does. Worry. Be happy. Yeah. For Drew, she's really stimulated by the musical accompaniment. That gets her brain, you can see it gets her brain fizzing with fun. And then within that basic framework, we play copy games, essentially. So I copy what Drew does, and Drew copies what I do. And straight away, you can have a dialogue within a musical framework. Drew and Adam play a drum together. music's so easy to copy. All you have to do is tap uh, a drum or a shaker shaker. And if someone else copies you, then straight away you've got a relationship because the, the child can think, oh, I see, so I can affect what that person does. And maybe they're doing the same as me. Maybe, they're, maybe they are a bit like me. Maybe they think like me and maybe they feel like me. And so the whole empathy that's so important to us as human beings can start to evolve through these simple musical turn-taking exercises. Level four is about chunks of sound, the building blocks of music. When we listen to music, we don't hear individual notes. We hear patterns, what psychologists call gestalts. So it's like shape. And it's a crucial stage of musical understanding. Felix plays the drums with his teacher, Paul. Adam plays the piano. Looking at Felix, you can see how he's very much a level four child. He plays bursts of rhythm on the drum. So for him, music is about these individual chunks of three or four notes that follow one another. He loves using those chunks of sound in an interaction and also in the context of a wider piece as well. So he can make music with another person by using these building blocks and putting them one after another. Yeah. Felix is visually impaired and hearing impaired. So for him, vibration is particularly important. And he can feel uh, vibrations through, through my fingers, for example. He also enjoys touching instruments as they're being hit, like the drum, because he can feel that vibration. Ah. And the combination of the sound going through his ears and the sound, the vibration coming through his body gives him an experience that he relishes. All right. Hi, Jack. Four-year-old Jack plays the piano with Adam. Jack is really on the cusp of level four and level five. So he's, he enjoys chunks of sound. He'll play little bursts of melody on the keyboard. Jack, play it, ready? Incy, wincy, spider, climb up the water spout. Down in the rain and wash ball, incy, out, out. And he's just learning how to stitch those together to make whole pieces. In sea, in sea, spider, climb up the spout again. Yay! 
He's got a good sense of rhythm and a good sense of pitch. And he's learning to, to move his fingers in the right way in order to recreate on the keyboard the patterns of music he's got in his head. Ready for twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle. As a teacher working with Jack, the thing is to scaffold his development. So he's really functioning about level four with chunks of sound. And just with a little support, he can be encouraged to, to link those chunks together to form a whole song, Twinkle Twinkle, for example. So he'll, he'll play the first little bit, and then he'll need a bit of a hand to get to the beginning of the next chunk of sound. Diamond in the sky. It's about giving a child just the right level of support for them to succeed. And the aim is to save that support, so that the child is increasingly independent. You can see through a lesson how Jack goes from needing quite a high level of support to being really quite independent in playing a tune. Ready? In sea, wind, sea, spider, climbed up the water spout. Sometimes it can be overwhelming when you see a child with quite complex needs. It can be a real challenge to know where to start in terms of music making. But the golden rules are observe, don't be afraid to take time, that's crucial, to see just how a child reacts to music. And try and, try and use the way they react, that they may move, they may be still, they may show an emotion, to try and figure out what's happening in their brains. A knee, knee, clap. A knee, knee, clap. A knee. What this film tells us is that disability is no barrier to music making. And also there's a distinct path of development that children will follow. And it's crucial that practitioners understand how music develops so they can promote a child's musical journey in the best possible way. Upon your knee. Yay! That's amazing.